We're going to start our app by building the basic UI structure. That means creating two labels to tell the user what to do, and then three image buttons to contain world flags. First things first though, I'd like you to download and install into your project the assets required. I have them here already, they're called project2-files. There's a bunch of file names here. You see it's country name, then either at 2x.ping or at 3x.ping, and the at 3x, at 2x part determines how big the pictures are, and it's used for pixel density. Think about the original iPhone, it had a very, very small screen, and then iPhone 4 came along with a retina screen. That was twice the resolution of the original iPhone screen, hence at 2x. And then more recently we had the super retina screens at 3x. So that's for triple resolution screens, even sharper pictures. Now to add these to your project, I want you to select your asset catalog and then just drag the pictures into this space here, this middle pane, and it'll add them all here, ready for us to use. And now I return back to contentview.swift and we can get busy. First up, we need two properties to store our game data. That's an array of all the country images we want to work with, plus an integer storing which image is correct for this current question. So we'll say there is uh, var countries, an array of Estonia, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Nigeria, Poland, oops, Russia, Spain, UK, and US. So all the country names, and they match the exact file name we just put in the asset catalog. We'll also make a new integer called correct answer equal to int.random in the range zero through two. So there'll be three flags visible at any given time. So the correct one's either zeroth, oneth, or tooth. Next up, inside our body here, we're gonna lay out our game prompt in a vertical stack. So I'll say as a vstack with some instructions saying text, tap the flag of, and then text countries, uh, come on, correct answer. So it'll say, tap the flag of France, tap the flag of Nigeria, and so forth. Now below this, we want to have our tappable flag buttons, and while we could add them just the same VStack as before, we can actually create a second VStack around the first one, so we have more control over the spacing. Now the VStack we just created above here, this holds two text views and has no special spacing, but the flag's going to have 30 points of spacing between them, so it looks just better on the screen. So what we wanna do is, we're gonna add below the end of the VStack here, our for each. We'll say for each zero to three, number comes in, make a button, and when it's pressed, we'll just have a comment here, flag was tapped. The label for the button will be an image. In this particular case, it'll be country's number. So one, uh, zero, one or two with the rendering mode of original. So it doesn't go blue to show it's highlighted. And now our problem is that this body property here is gonna be quite confused. It's gonna try and send back multiple things. You can see it's got a <laughs> the text, then a flag, then another flag, then a third flag. Uh, that's not the intention, right? Obviously we want this all to be in one screen at the same time. And this is where our second VStack comes in because I'd like you to add another VStack here around the original VStack and the for each. So we'll say VStack here, push the VStack inside and the for each inside, then end the VStack. And for this one, like I said, I want 30 points of spacing. So the outermost VStack will have spacing of 30. Give it a nice little push apart like that. Now having two vertical stacks like this allows us to position things more precisely. The outer stack has spacing of 30, so it'll space out its views 30 points each. 
The inner stack has no spacing and that's fine. That's enough to give you a basic idea of our UI and already you can see it isn't very good. Um, some flags here have whitened them here and here, so it's not really clear what's going on. Uh, we, we're gonna come back and polish the UI in, in stages as we progress through this. But for now, I want to add a nice blue background color so the flags become easier to see. And to do this, we're gonna put our V stacks inside another stack, a Z stack or a Z stack. So we'll say before the outermost V stack is our Z stack. And then push all these things inside it like that. And now to have a blue background behind all this, we can just go before the V stack and say color dot blue dot ignores safe area. And bang, it fills in. It's, you know, better, but only just. Um, I would, while we're here, go ahead and modify our text. Tap the flag off to have foreground color of white. Go on, dot white. And then here, dot foreground color of white, just so they stand out properly against that sort of light blue background. <laughs> this design is, is clearly not gonna set the world light, but it's a solid start.